This is our last day in Turin, Italy. I've been here four days now. Really saw the different side of downtown the other day. I wanted to go into more of like where the locals go, more complicated parts of the city. So I met a guy named Ciro, and I asked Ciro like where a very difficult part of the city is. And he was very, very hesitant to tell me, but he finally uh, told me about this place called Porto Palazzo. We take the, the Corsa Regina and the Margarita Street to Porto Palazzo. And when he was telling me about it, he like looked, he like made me pull up all my sleeves and show like, made sure that I have no jewelry, no watch, no rings, no chain, no anything. And he's like, don't ever let your guard down. He's like, uh, only carry a 50 euro note. And he's like, pay the fuck attention when you go there. So, so that just should be a lot of fun. Should be really interesting. Should be very good for creativity. But then the other night I met this really wonderful group of Albergistans. This group of six wonderful Albergistans. And when we were leaving, I met them in the courtyard. We were just talking, having this wonderful conversation. I told them I'd love to have dinner with them before I left. And so they invited me to dinner tonight. And so gonna meet them at the same courtyard. And then I don't know if they're gonna take us to their favorite place uh, for dinner or if we're gonna go back, hopefully, for a homemade dinner and just a beautiful conversation. So it's the only plans we got today. And Boom. St starting at the Poverty Kitchen. Alger Bajanians. That sounds like it. You speak in English. Uh, a little, no, no. yeah. No. I love, I photograph people all over the world. And I love your look. You have the glasses and uh, the beard and everything. So I'm looking through here. This shot of you, of you, okay. is amazing. And this is one, uh, it's, it's uh, gratis. It's free, it's like, I don't want any. Free, free. Free. Yeah, to, uh, to show people to like put their phones away and to look and see the world, you know, to see people again like this. Yeah. Do you mind? No, I uh, prefer the no. No, 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 I that's prefer okay. That's okay. Okay. that's okay. That's okay. That's okay. What's your name? Uh, Io Marco. Yeah, Marco? I'm Adam. 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 Mi spiace Adam. Lo uh, no para my Italia, yeah. <laughs> Excuse me, do, do you know Porta Palazzo? Porta Palazzo, uh, Pendri Quattro, qui. This? Quattro. Oh, yeah, yeah, the ones. Speak English, eh? the, Yeah, English, yeah, you okay, know? Okay, it's okay. Uh, here, uh, number four. The bus. Uh, the bu tram, 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 tram. Yeah, tram uh, number four, uh, directamente uh, to uh, Porta Palazzo. And you go to the right or to the left? Yeah, no one. To the right. Sorry? Where do they pick you up? Yeah, yeah, I, I also... I oh, okay, that. you're going to, okay, perfect, appreciate that. Where are you from? Yeah, I'm originally from Syria. Yeah, I was going to say. Yeah. yeah, I was going to say, not from. Yeah. Syria is a beautiful oh. country. Yeah, yeah. 35 minutes? Yeah, to here. I mean, uh, you know, people uh, is different. So yeah, I, yeah. I like to see different places. I like live, working, see a friend, other country. Yeah. I, I like this. I don't know yeah. if people yeah. is different, but I like it. Oh, yeah, I love but it all. Just but the good people I don't like, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People, <laughs> only this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> The bus number 11. Do you know what yeah. stop we get off for the Palazzo? Uh, Porta Palazzo, yeah. It's big, you know, Square. like here. Yeah. It's, it's around, it's too big inside. And have, it's a big market. Inside has yeah. a big, it's yeah, open totally market. Yeah, totally you know, yeah, yeah. big, big, big market. It's too big and open, open so maybe market. maybe 15 minutes, you're on it. Yeah, 12 minutes maximum, 12, okay. 15 minutes inside. Big place. They said it's like Morocco, like yeah, all yeah, the day yeah, over yeah, by like the, the, yeah, the, the so. big, <laughs> yeah, the same. Well, amazing. So different, really nice Thank to meet Thank you, my friend. You have a beautiful day. Yeah, we just met Ahmed wonderful gentleman from Syria. We got to listen to a lot more about his culture. Uh, he speaks five different languages, absolutely incredible. And he came to France by himself, but he walked us to the bus uh, to tell us how to get to Porta Palazzo, which is bus number 11. We're gonna go about 12 minutes. We really don't know uh, what to look for, but I guess we're just gonna ask when we get a little bit closer. All right, we came here, what did we find? Well, I guess, yeah, I guess we gotta come earlier in the day. But to me, this is still really, really interesting. It's just like very chaotic. To me, it's just non-conventional and it's not normal. And uh, it's like very interesting. It's very loud also. So to me, this is like aesthetically very, very good for creativity. Jack was just asking like, why do we come? The market's not here. I don't, like I want, I didn't even know that there was a market. I just heard Porta Palato is a very dangerous, difficult place of Turin, Italy. 
The reason I come to this place is because everything is interesting to me in places where the locals live, where the locals are. And to me, these are the places where I find that these are where normal people are. There's no tourism here. This is not where the tourists go at all. This is where the locals go. This is where a bit of the poverty is. This is where like normal folk uh, go and this is a part of their actual life. So to me, this is much more normal. And also everything's just a lot more interesting to me because it's a lot more rugged and rustic and nothing's polished and it's dirty and it's gross. And, and also like I find it a lot easier to talk to people in situations like this because more normal people is a part of it. Uh, we heard that Porta Palazzo is like, everyone's like, don't go there, it's dangerous, it's sketchy. Everyone was like, oh, you're wearing a watch and chain, like don't. And so when they told me that, I was like, well, now I, I have to go. I can't wait to go, so. I've been going there uh, every, every day for like three years. And <laughs> yeah, 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 there's a lot of, the fear's usually in your mind, you know. Can I, I'm gonna get your photo, do you mind? Yeah, sure. This would be cool. <laughs> yeah, you look too nice. Come on, you're supposed to look mean with the cigarette. Yeah, it's you're cold, still yeah. Though. yeah. <laughs> but as artists, like we're supposed to be the ones showing the world, like that there's more, yeah, and there's more to us than we think when we look in the mirror. Like the way that other people see us is so different than the way that we see ourselves, you know? Let me get one more. Would you sit right here? Yeah, I think this is really cool too. That's so awesome. I think one of the most beautiful ways that I've learned to travel, one of the deepest and most immersive ways that I've learned to travel is to get a recommendation from a local on where to go. And then you go to that place. And then once you're in that place, obviously you look around and enjoy it. But um, then you meet people around that place. And when you meet people around that place, you have a beautiful conversation like with Zoe here. Um, but then you ask that person to tell you where to go next. And so he's told us about this incredible, uh, this incredible church that's over here. So we walk in that direction, and then you can repeat that as many times as you want to. But no matter what, it always leads you into a place that you probably wouldn't have found any other way. Um, and always also is just a really pure way to stay as close to the local culture as possible. Okay, so yeah, we just saw, I mean, easily one of my favorite parts of spontaneous traveling, and this happens all the time to me, but it's like, if you want to be a traveler, not a, a tourist, then you know, you don't just go where the tourists go, you just go where the locals go. And so, you know, this all started for me talking to a man named Chiro, and then he told me a place not to go, which was the uh, Palazzo, and so we figured out how to go by the Palazzo, but we didn't know how to get here, so we had to ask locals on how to get to the bus. We met Ahmed. And Ahmed told us about growing up in Syria and his family and speaking five languages. And then he walked us to the bus. And then uh, the market, which is like the main part of the Palazzo, was closed. So it's like, you know, a lot of people might say, OK, well, you know, the reason we came is not here. But to me, it's still like, you know, you're there. And so you just keep exploring from there. And then we met, uh, we saw some castle ruins and we walked through the castle ruins and then there's a girl reading a book there, smoking a cigarette. And I just went up to ask her about, you know, the book she was reading and her name was Zoe. And she told me that she's a film writer and, uh, you know, a writer that's from Serbia and lived in France. And then, you know, is, is writing a play on both of the two. So what I would love to do is, you know, people that live here, I'm like, hey, you, you know, tell me where to go next. And so she pointed this direction and she said, well, this church is very beautiful. That's all she told us. And so we went back to the castle ruins and then we just walked in the church. Obviously, every church in Europe is just very beautiful. But then we walked in and uh, there's incredible singing going on. And so we kind of followed to the back of the church. And then we realized that this is where they keep the Shroud of Turin, which is like, you know, one of the most sacred uh, ornaments in the Christian religion of the, the blanket, the sheet that they laid over Jesus something that is believed that was actually touched Christ himself. Um, and there we are in that church, seeing this very incredible, beautiful thing. I would have never found if I just, you know, was looking at a map or if I was just kind of Googling where to go. And all of this cost us nothing. It opened up a bunch of unique encounters and experiences and conversations with it, but it also led us into a place that is just incredibly special um, that I never even thought would have been in a place like this. Excuse me, do you speak any English? Sorry, sorry to bother you. Do you speak any English? Uh, no. No? Sorry. We, I was coming through from the back uh -huh. and I saw your camera, but I saw your coat. Your coat, the colors, this, uh -huh. the coat, yeah. 
And uh, it's a very beautiful photo. And I was gonna ask, can I take a photo? Yeah, yeah, of course, with the beautiful, yeah. What's your name? No, 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 Simone. sit right there, yeah, yeah. Simone. Simone, Adam. Yeah, nice to meet you. Got you, got you, hold on. Okay, look at this, right here, okay. Yeah, 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 okay. One, two, three. And then one more close, last one, okay. Thank you. Yeah, it was a pleasure, yeah. Yeah, I'm happy to send it, so. You Italia? Yes. Italian. From here? Torino. Torino? Torino? Yeah. It's very beautiful. Beautiful place, yeah. And cold. <laughs> Many times. Can you take photos of of what? The uh, animal. Animals? Animals. Just in the... Uh, uh, oh, wow, wow, wow. Bird, uh, For hobby. hobby? Yeah. Amazing. Well, it's nice to meet you, okay? Ciao. So I've been here for a couple weeks so far, uh, just moving around Europe. And the other day when I was here, I was coming through this courtyard here and um, I was just looking for a bathroom. And uh, I didn't know there's a forest back here. Maybe I'd you know, just try to find something in the forest. I found this bathroom here. And then I saw this beautiful, massive building over here. And so I walked over here in this courtyard and I was just kind of looking around and I, I saw some gentlemen and I asked uh, what it was. And uh, they were very, very kind, and they spoke great English, and so we started to talk, and he actually had his phone, so he Googled and told me it was a museum, and, but, you know, their accent wasn't Italian, so we just started this conversation. And with the conversation, uh, we, uh, I ended up getting a really beautiful picture of all six of them, and uh, just having a lot of fun in the picture. Um, but when we, we split up, they, uh, we said, you know, let's all have dinner. Um, and uh, I told him I was going to come back and uh, would like to have dinner with them. So tonight we're so fortunate that uh, they're going to be hosting us for a lovely dinner and we don't know what to expect, but uh, just a beautiful human encounter that came from a stranger. Yeah, there's Salman. Hey Salman. Thanks for looking for us. Yeah, we were sitting back at the same place we met. And then I was like, I bet they're coming where we split apart, you know? What do you guys want to do? Yeah, the museum? Yeah. Pretty cool. Have you been there? No. Have you? Yeah. Let's go. When was the last time you guys came up here? I think that one month ago. Before the um, Islamic religion, uh, we believed in fire. Like our people prayed, uh, prayed to fire. And even we had some uh, like kind of church, like building, buildings, uh, the places where people came and uh, all together they prayed to the, uh, to the fire. Like there's a good forces and uh, evil forces. Yeah, okay. But the fire would seem like it symbolizes evil. Yes. Evil. Exactly. Yeah, so you're, they're worshiping the evil. No, no, not symbolize the evil. It's what, it was like, maybe uh, they thought uh, evil is burning in the fire. Wow, that's really incredible. That's really fascinating. We're only here because of you. Because I asked you what that was, and then you took it upon yourself yeah. to look it up and then come and yes. tell me, yeah, so I appreciate this, yeah, very nice. Made this a very rich experience for me and a very connected experience. The world's a beautiful place, you know, and we're all humans together and we can all share and learn from each other, you know. Everyone pour some water, we're gonna cheers. Uh, I'm raising this glass for new experiences, for new friendship, and all of us are glad to, to know you, Adam to know you, Jack, and we're, we're really, really welcoming you, and like, we're very happy to know you. Thank you very much. It's my honor. Thank you so Thank much. You. I used to travel the world for years just to take pictures, and you know, usually not of people. So I was always very scared of talking to people, so I'm very like, I don't like rejection, you know? So if I would talk to you, Vescar, and you would say, ah, like, it would make me feel bad, you know? So then I would like, ah, I'm not gonna talk. But then I, want, I wanted to be closer to people. I wanted to get to know people. This is a real connection. This is not like we, had, we talked for a few minutes and then I walked away and you know, or like I took your picture and then I walked away. This will inspire a lot of people, I think, to be able to hopefully go out and be able to say like, just 
speak different languages, you're from different parts of the world, from countries I didn't even know existed, like even where on the globe, and now like I get to learn about your country and, and know more, and now I'm going to go to your country. Thank you, Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Well, just two days ago, I mean, I was walking through this courtyard here, and I ended up in a place, and asked about a building and started a conversation with Beskar back there and I told them you know I just said I'd love to have dinner with you guys and be able to talk more and they said absolutely like any time and they thought we we're coming next week and I threw it on them last night like for us to have dinner and they just finished their final exams and then they are all tired and exhausted but there's no question they welcomed us out they met us at 5 30 they brought us to their favorite place in the city and then they took us to uh, dinner, and then we had this just beautiful, beautiful, connected, wonderful dinner of sharing stories and hearing about their culture and telling them about ours. And then they sneak out when we're not paying attention and pay for the dinner and then take care of everything. And when we're leaving, they sat and they said, you know, they thanked us so much. And it was like, come on, you guys gave us so much and this is such a beautiful experience for us. And then I said, you know, we don't know like where we're going, can you just point to us? And they're like, no, 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 we will always walk you to where we're going. And uh, they walked us another almost a mile. And when they leave, they're telling us, thank you for, for this time. And they invite us to their country to stay with their families and all for nothing. Just connection and uh, putting yourselves out there. You know, it's, it's a beautiful experience.